Welcome everyone back to Pommy and Oz. Hope we're all doing really well. If you're new around here, please hit that like button and subscribe. We've really got a load of new subscribers, new members. If you've done any of that, thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. It means the absolute world to me. Make sure you jog your memory. 1 to 10 and 11 to 20 are already up. We're going to do 21 to 30 today. I've really enjoyed these videos and the feedback has been absolutely sensational for it. So thank you very much for that. Plan for the rest of the week. We'll rattle these off. We'll probably start going two a day. We've got the live draft with some special guests coming up next week, which will be after the lists are kind of finalised once the delisted free agency period ends. Uh, and they can do their little tinkering with their lists. And we'll also have my full mock draft, which will be going with all the picks. Uh, there will be probably a little bit of a fun mock draft the first round. If you're interested in that, we'll do that. Probably just a bit before. I don't want to keep releasing mock drafts. I know you're all keen for them, but I don't want to keep like doing it and then things change. Like I did that, how many picks, and then literally two days later, the AFL decided to release them all for young and old. So let's get into it today. 21. 21 and we've got this gentleman here, Sammy Marshall. I'm big fan of this guy and Usually when I talk about NDAs, father, sons, academy players like that, I always say that they're going to slide or they're going to go a little bit lower. I can see this guy foreseeably going a little bit earlier. I think some teams may have a punt in that top 20. The reason being, this is where Brisbane have got to outlay it. They've got some great picks and they should pick him up. And I'm not saying he won't, but if I was a list manager and I had a pick around 15, 16, I'd maybe tempt it, just purely because I think this kid is better than what he says. Sandy Dragon's kid here, and when you look at him this year, he's had a really good year. Eight games in the Talent League for Sandy, uh, 23 touches, six marks, 3.8 inside 50s, 2.6 clearances, 6.5 score involvements. And 0.5 goals. And for me, a really, really underrated little player here. I, I feel like when you've got the incredible skills he's got, he's got the footy IQ, he's got incredible vision. And I think another thing people are talking about is just how clean he is and the things that he can do that other players in this pool can. And I think he's really understated that when he goes about his work, he is really, really strong. And... That 0.5 goals, he can kick him. In the national championships, 0.3 goals, 27 touches, 5 marks, 3.3 inside 50s, 5 clearance, five score involvements and 3.8 tackles from his four games. And he played a spot of VFL where he didn't do just so bad. 15.5 touches, 4 marks, 1 clearance, 1 tackle. Um, playing like a slightly half forward, pinch hitting at the half back incredible runner this guy's one of the best runners here and if you're looking for a player i would say that is like maybe a bit of a pod sam marshall may come into that conversation that's why i think teams may have a look at him a little bit earlier than planned up next number 22 one of my favorites in this draft class and we talked about harvey langford he's got a mate here called cooper who i think may be the Audi version. And I mean that with all due respect in him. A bit more versatile, can play down the black, has played half forward predominantly, pinch it in the midfield. Very, very, very similar type player. 190, big boy. If you look at him, 15 games he had for the Rays this year. 24 touches, 4 marks, 4.5 inside 50s, 5 clearances, 7 score involvements, 3 tackles, 1.5 goals a game. Back that up in the national championships as well. Did the boy playing the four games. 17 touches, five marks, three inside 50s, five score involvements, two and a half tackles and a goal a game. This guy has got X factor written all over him. And had a few niggles in and out of the year, but has been an absolute bear moth for the Stingrays. Massive score involvements. Massive scoreboard in bat. He's got that power through the running core, which is really, really important. He's definitely got that X factor. Part of the leadership group as well. Something you should really not understate. Impressed for country. Impressed for Stingrays. And for me, this guy here is one of them blokes that isn't talked about enough and could be that jewel in the crown. 
I'm a big fan of him. The fact that he's so versatile, a little bit, a lot quicker than Harvey Langford. Probably the slight knock is probably his aerobic fitness, but I always say this, you can work on that. I'm working that on myself. So if I can do it at 39, imagine what an 18-year-old can do. Solid little player, big fan. 23, we've got some of the twins coming in now, and I'm a big fan of Jackie Whitlock. Moe Bush Rangers boy. Um, this guy here, it's like he's wearing. Do you remember Sketch, the game where you used to have like the round thing? With Velcro and used to throw a ball. That's what his hands are like. Real strong, strong for the Bush Rangers this year. 12 games, 16 touches, 5 marks, 7 score involvements, 2 goals. A sweet kick in action. Uh, incredible vertical leap. His mobility is exceptional. He leads from the deep, full, full forward, and leads straight up the ground. Real good running lanes. Really intuitive. 4 games, very state. One goal a game, two tackles, 15 touches, five marks, six score involvements. Really showcasing his ability as well to work defensively. Really well-rounded. He's pinch hit as well in the rook, which is another little condiment there. At 200 centimetres, definitely someone that you look at as a real, real project here. And a well-worthy player to be in the top 20 to 30 players. I'm a big fan of Whitlock. I think both of these twins have got something about them and they're not talked about enough for me. Not talked about enough for me. And I can see someone pairing them up. 24, Jesse Detoli. What a footballer this guy is. This guy really gives me shades of someone like Thomas Papley, that 179 type player that can just make something happen and also play a lot bigger than he is. Definitely got that X factor, particularly as that conduit between midfield and forward. Seven games for the Knights. Old NKs were a big fan of the Northern Knights round here. 23 touches, four marks, 2.6 inside 50s, four clearances, six score involvements, just under two goals a game with three tackles. Back that up for State. 15 touches, 0.8 goals a game, 0.5 tackles, six score involvements, seven marks. And this guy is absolutely... X Factor. He's got an elite engine, so much so that at times he was deployed on the wing. He's quick, good decision maker, incredible game breaker as well. Very clean as well. Quite often a little bit like Lockie Fogarty. You see him with the last hands, then paddles in stoppages, trying to keep the game moving. A real modern day type player. And I feel like this guy here is one of them guys that you can play in the pocket early doors. And get some results. I'm a big fan of Jesse. And really want to watch out for. He's got all them talents that scream. You know what? I'll be alright. I'll be alright in the seniors. I'm a big fan. And I wouldn't be surprised to see him pushing to go a bit higher than I've ranked him. 25. I'm a big fan of this kid. Big fan. I don't think he's getting the love. That in my opinion he should have. I've seen people have him in the 30s. And I've got him quite high up. If you're looking for a defender at 181 who's going to play at the halfback line and take the mick, this could be your guy. F 10 games for Sandy Dragons, 15 touches, 3.6 marks, 2 rebound 50s, 5 intercept possessions, 2 tackles. Back that up at the national champs for the country. 16 touches, 5 marks, 5 intercept possessions, 1.5 tackles. This kid here is probably the premier small-sided player at defending, like very Nick Newman-like, doesn't get beaten very often, uses his body well, he's got a great bit of pace, he reads the play incredibly well, and I think the big thing for me, this guy's got a doctor in kicking 101, doctor kick, you could say, and he, the way he plays, he's very calm, he's not phased, this guy here for me is someone that I would be having very high up on my list, and when I do my little draft board, I always have this rule that if the player's probably five picks, if let's say I had picked 15 and this player's on the board and I ranked him 10, but I didn't need this player, he's one of them players that maybe bucks the trend. I have a five pick rule that if the player is better than what my needs are, I may take him, I may take him even though it's not my plan. I think Harry may be one of them cases in the 20s if he's still there, you start biting the bullet because he is an incredible, incredible footballer. 
Really hot on this one. One to really watch out for. 26, we've talked about his brother. Jack, we've now got Matty. A little bit different though, Matt. Playing down back and forward. And he's really showcased something to work with. And this is why I think you could pair them. 14 games for the Bush Rangers. 14 touches, 5 marks, 5 score involvements, 2 goals a game. National Championships playing a little bit more down the back there. 5 marks, um, 3 score involvements, 0.5 goals a game. <clears throat> Again, incredibly versatile and incredibly mobile. Very like his brother. One thing that separates him from his brother is his read of the ball in the air. I think. They're very similar types of players, but I think Jack is definitely a forward moving forward. Matt, you can see the way he peels off, the way he plays in the forward line. He likes to create separation early, which is very important. He does like to play in behind as well and come from that way, which is a little bit different to Jack. That is probably the big difference between these two. I really like this pick. Like, like for me, I look at this and think this is probably one of the safer key defenders, key, big players. 198, slightly smaller than his brother. That's how you tell them apart. But an incredible player nonetheless. And one I'm really excited about seeing in the bigs. 27, a guy that we've talked about a lot, a lot. And he was probably going very high when we did this last year. Bit of a disappointing year by his standards. But this guy here is complete in my opinion. Play the eight games uh, for the old Oaks. 22 touches, 4 marks, 3.6 inside 50s, 2.6 clearances, 6.5 score involvements, 3 tackles and a goal, a game. Back that up at state level as well. 20 touches, 3 clearances, 7 score involvements, 3.5 tackles, 0.5 goals a game. And this guy here is deceptively quick, but a game-breaking type player. A guy that can play half forward and then pinch hit. And you're going to look at that it that way. If I want someone that can play forward 60%, pinch it 40, give me a POD, the gross dog is the one for me. 181 centimetres. I think this is a real gem. A real gem in this lot here. Like I say, you can't buy scoreboard impact. Goal kicking midfielders. Um, it's one of them things, do you know what I mean, that I look at and I just think this is the modern day footballer. This is the game as it's going now. We're looking at these players that are kind of licorice all sorts players that can really give spot fires in different areas. And Tommy Gross is one of my favourites in this draft. We've talked about him an awful lot. Big fan. Whoever picks him up, going to get one hell of a bargain. And then we go to the Northern, um, to GMV. Uh, and we're looking at small forwards now. And this guy here, I feel, has been undersold. Undersold as old Hammerford. 17 games for GMV, 16.7 touches, 4 tackles, 4 score involvements, 1.2 goals a game. Back that up in his 3 games for State, 10 touches, 3 tackles, 3 marks. Real defensive, pressure-based type player who gets his hands dirty, but this guy is lightning. And I haven't seen someone who dishes dimes. He's almost like Steph Curry in that forward line. He's always looking to make something happen, but he puts the pressure on. Modern day game where pressure is paramount, who can kick goals. This guy's got it all. Played his club footy at Sandhurst, you know, the home of golf in Australia. Really, really impressive. And really showcased that. And he's also not just a one-trick pony. This kid can get his hands on the ball as well. They have deployed him up top in the midfield at times. And you see him in around stoppages. This guy is deadly. A real danger, man. Looks to give it out. Looks to play the game. A real strong player. And one that I'm really looking forward to. 29. Another key forward. John T. Fall. And John T. Fall for me. Another guy that has kind of slipped under a lot of people's radar. This guy here can really make a difference. And he's really showcased that for the GMV. 11 games for them. 13 touches. 5 marks. 7 score involvements. Just under 3 goals a game. Backed it up at national championship level, just under two goals a game, three marks, four score involvements, two tackles. Incredible vertical leap. This guy here is like a fish out of water. Incredibly mobile. Very Max King vibes when I watch him, the way that he does his business. Likes to work really outside the 50. Present really well. Marking sensational. Brings the ball down as well. Real good understanding of the craft it takes to play this level. 
Real nice set shot routine as well. It's really steady. It's one of them ones that looks like it could cope under pressure. I'm a big fan of this kid. And I think this guy here as well has shown big moments. Big moments in his junior years. In them big games, he has really, really looked like he is ready. And someone that has progressively got better from the start of the year that was injury interrupted in preseason to where he is now looking solid. A really good pickup here if you're in your late 20s, early 30s. And we finish with, I think maybe, the hidden gem of the draft. And that is WA's midfield maestro, Hamish Davis. And this guy here, whether it's been at half forward or on the ball, has really, really showcased what he is. Playing in the Waffle Seniors, he's played seven games for Claremont, which is phenomenal. And that's a real technical league. Real technical league. 14 touches, 3 marks, 3 inside 50s, 5 score involvements, a goal a game and 2 tackles. So remember, that's for men. That's for men. And Claremont are a solid side. In the Colts, dominated. 9 games, 23 touches, 5 marks, 5 inside 50s, 3 clearances, 8 score involvements, just under 2 goals a game. And for WA this year, who weren't exactly crash hot, 15 touches, 4 marks, 3 inside 50s, Six score involvements, two tackle and um, two goals a game. His time trial, his endurance is incredible. His strength is incredible. He's got that real point of difference. He's incredibly clean. He uses the ball well. Um, he's really, really, really intuitive. A best on in a granny as well, this guy. This guy can really play football. And to play senior football at that age really showcases it guy that can play half forward and be that real target at 190 who can pinch it in the midfield is a rare commodity and this is someone I can see again going a lot earlier than I suggest remember these are my rankings from basically favorite to least favorite but don't use favorite because I don't have favorites they're all like my kids that is my 30 let me know in the comment section where you are I'll put a nice little post up for 30s make sure you come and check it out Make sure you go and watch the other videos. Make sure you hit it a like and subscribe. Loads of content coming your way. Peace, love, and light. Pom me out. I see you rolling up over black Cadillac. High heel boots and a sexy body full of tats. Baby's bad, oh, baby's hella bad.